and say, I'm Lisa Bird Wilson, and I'm the author of Probably Ruby. Probably Ruby is about Ruby, who's Indigenous and adopted, and she spends her um, her life really trying to figure out her identity, trying to figure out um, you know where she's come from, and trying to find her way back home. And so. For me, Ruby, you know, represents this contemporary embodiment uh, of what it means to be Indigenous on this land today. And if you're an Indigenous person on this continent today, that history of um, colonialism and uh, violence around colonial history is part of your history no matter what. And so you see in the book that Ruby, Ruby's family has that history and all of that history is sort of behind Ruby um, and Ruby doesn't even necessarily know it so this is this is Ruby in the here and now but what is it that's impacted Ruby to be where she is today and I think that understanding that history that shared history that we have on this land it's not just for Indigenous people um, to know that and to understand it it's not just our story it's our shared story together so I think that's part of why the book is um, important now to think about those concepts and those themes. So the main character in the book, of course, is Ruby. Uh, Ruby is a character who is, uh, she's sort of got a really big personality. She's got a big laugh. Um, and she, you know, she takes up a lot of space in the book uh, and, you know, sort of in the room. Um, Ruby is, I wanted Ruby I wanted readers to be able to relate to Ruby in terms of her struggles and in terms of her healing and just uh, her humanity as an Indigenous uh, person in this contemporary context that we're in today. Um, Ruby is also, uh, she's pretty vulnerable, but I think that it's important to also see that Ruby is not a victim. Uh, she's very much a survivor, and um, in part, Ruby is also kind of funny. I think your heart and soul goes into a first novel like that. Um, it's really hard to write a book. It's really hard to write a novel. Um, and I think that an author, and most authors probably do this, I did for sure, you pour everything. I, I put I put it all into my book. I didn't leave anything behind. So I think that first novels are special that way in that the author just sort of has to, you know, you have to dig so deep and you have to give everything to that book. Um, so for me, that's, that's one of the reasons I would say a first novel is very special. I think I probably have about three things to say to somebody who's writing their first novel. And the first would be write all the way through to the end. You can edit later, um, but get through through your story. And that that's a struggle and something that's difficult for me. And so that's advice that I try to take for myself. Um, the other piece is you're gonna edit more than you ever thought possible. So, you know, I don't even know if you can prepare for that, but uh, it's definitely, um, something that's going to happen and the other thing is I would say either join or even create a writing group because I think that one of the things that does is it gives you some structure around your writing and gives you a deadline to write towards so I have been in a writing group for 20 years now and I appreciate that writing group more and more as I go along because they do give me that um, that deadline and that uh, objective to write towards towards something that I sort of owe them the next piece um, of my writing. So those are my pieces of advice. The three books that are on my uh, side table right now are Dog Flowers by Danielle Geller. It's a memoir. Um, and Michelle Good's Five Little Indians, which is, uh, I'm trying to slow myself down in reading it and really sort of, you know, savor it a little bit um, and the other book is Jenny Hagen Wills 
uh, wrote a memoir called Older Sister Not Necessarily Related. And I'm, I'm on my second reading of that. And I'm also trying to slow myself down so that I can really, it's so poetic and beautiful.